welcome to another session from uh, on audio apps from Zazazu. Uh, suddenly my playback is not working, so I'm kind of taking it on faith and some feedback from Lori that I am actually broadcasting uh, and not just talking to myself. Um, we'll, we'll just have to go with that. Um, oh, now I think I see it starting. Yeah, okay, we are there. Anyhow, um, tonight's session is uh, means I can see the chat, so please comment in the YouTube chat, and I will happily answer questions that I submit. Uh, tonight's session is going to be on session state, um, which is saving things between stuff. So you know, if we just do something, I can crank out the um, thing I've been working on. Open six swords. Try that again. Open six swords. Welcome to Six Swords, Joe Jaquinta. Around you is Forrest. Who? Your active companion is Anastasia. She currently has five hit points out of five. Your other companions are Rudolph, Joshua, Georgia, and Howard. South. You travel south. Rihanna regains consciousness. Around you is Forrest. You are not afraid of the challenges that lie ahead. East. You travel east. Around you is forest. You are not afraid of the challenges that lie ahead. North. You travel north. Around you is forest. North. You travel north. Around you is forest. There are signs of baboon here. Stop. I didn't catch what you said. Try repeating or say help. Quit. Um, anyhow, so, that skill, like many other skills, needs to remember what happened. Every call, every, you know, all audio apps, whether they're Alexa, whether they're Google Home, uh, the back end is implemented with a RESTful service. So that's one of the key things about a RESTful service is it is stateless. That means that you call it, it answers, and that's it. There's no implicit session data associated with that. Um, but the thing is there, I mean, if you're just sort of saying, you know, what's the temperature today? Currently, in Winchester, it's 37 degrees with rain. You can expect more of the same tonight, with a low of 36 degrees. You call it and it's done. Okay, something like that. Well, I guess it kind of has nowhere there. Well, let's try open demotivate. You think you live in a meritocracy? Please. You invoke the skill, it says something, it goes away. That sort of skill has no stake. It doesn't care. I, I rank it again. I might get the same thing. I might get something different. It's just, it's a random portion cookie. Okay. Uh, that doesn't need any stake. If you have the sort of skill you want to write, you can skip this. You don't need to listen to me. Um, other skills like we saw, you know, a, a simpler skill, open knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Wendy. Wendy who? Wendy wind blows, D cradle will fall. It has to remember between invocations what state of the joke it's in. So he's like, oh, wait, uh, that's right, it's the who's there bit, sort of thing like that. It's, uh, whereas something like Six Swords, which I showed you there, is inordinately complicated. You've got, you know, all the different people, there are different hit points, you've got baboons in the forest, you know, all this stuff going on there, you have to remember. So... Depending on your skill, you're going to have to remember certain things between invocations, okay? And there are a couple of ways of doing this, and I want to go... Um, there's ways that the provider supplies, be it uh, Alexa or Google Assistant, and there are ways that you can do it yourself. Uh, I kind of want to go with these, and I break them down into three levels, and this is, this is uh, our recommended way of doing this, where I, I suggest you consider when you look at the state you have to maintain that you... Uh, maintain it in one of these three categories. Um, so, let's start with the simple stuff. Um, both, as I said, both platforms uh, retain state for you. Okay, so you can embed in the request when you're called, you get this JSON blob, and you answer with a JSON blob. In the answer to the JSON blob is what you wanted to say, 
But you can also put other things in there. You can say, oh, by the way, here's a certain key, and here's a value I want you to restore with that. And the next time it calls you, it has that with it. Okay? That's handy, but that's not the end of things. Because the thing is, it only maintains those values for what it considers to be a session. Okay? We invoke knock-knock jokes, we talk back and forth a few times with it, and we terminate it. That's the end of that session. If I pick it up again, um, you know, if, 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 so for example, open knock-knock. Knock-knock. Who's there? Duncan. Quit. So, we had Duncan. That's where we were. Open knock-knock. Knock, knock. Quit. It starts all over again. Truffle. Let's see truffle. Truffle who? Truffle with love is. It can tear you up inside. I don't think I got that one. Anyhow, but it was a different joke. It, it lost track of where, where things were. That's because it doesn't... It's using those session variables, which go away whenever you hang up. Now, for many things, like, you know, knock, knock, joke, that's fine. Okay. But the trouble is, is that um, anything you want that's permanent or long-term, that's no good. You know, the baboons in the forest, six swords, something like that, that would never work. Um, because at the end of the session, they all go away again. Um, the other problem is that these audio devices terminate, I won't say in the least provocation, but uh, they are apt to terminate unexpectedly. Uh, if you sneeze, or if it doesn't quite hear what you say, or, you know, the kids run in, demand your attention, or the phone rings, or something like that, it can interrupt one of these things. It was one of the jokes I say that these audio devices are mostly for, you know, single people who live by themselves, because when you have more people in the room, it's kind of rude to sit there talking to your device, and other people are there, and they're like, hey, look at the internet, like this. So, from the device provider's point of view, the session drops, you lose all those, those variables to come on. Um... So, even for some things, that's not so good. So, this is why I break it down into three categories. Okay, there's first of all, the session that you can, that is made sense to maintain in the platform variables, okay, uh, is the highest level of session one and a half, okay, because those, and you only put things in there that it doesn't matter if they go away, okay, um, small and trivial things, like, you know, the knock-knock joke, okay, if you don't really care about it starting with a new joke, you can stay in there, that's fine. Um, then you have at the very bottom level, you have the persistent stuff, the stuff that you want to stay there forever. It doesn't matter if the user goes away for a minute, the user goes away for an hour, the user goes away for a week. When they come back, uh, Roberta is still your selected character, and you have so many hit points, and you're sitting in that forest wondering where the baboons are. I mean, uh, that's your lowest level. And in the middle, you have um, true session state. Now, the concept of the platform things is this is the uh, temporary things that you want to keep track of during a user interaction session. It falls short because what it thinks is a user interaction session is not always what you want to be a user interaction session. So my recommendation is that you have your own set of state things that you maintain to track user session. Instead of relying on the platform for user session information because the, you sneeze, it goes away again, uh, you work it out yourself. Okay, And uh, Let's look at uh, a couple of ways. Over. Well, let, let's dive into an actual example. Um, blackjack. Okay, that has a certain amount of state. Alexa. Sorry, I was, I was seeing maybe I meant sub war, but no, actually, no, I didn't. Actually, this is just for change. Okay, Google. Talk to 21 Blackjack. Sure, here's 21 Blackjack. Welcome back to Zaza Zoo's blackjack game. To start a new game, say deal. Uh, score. You have won twice. You have lost five times. What would you like to do now? Quit. Sure, cancelled. Alright, so. so Microphone thing. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Microphone on. Uh, so there we see that, but we have this sort of thing of like, oh, what's my score? How many games have I played? And, and it knows, and it tells me this. Okay, so uh, let's dive down, look at some code, and see how that worked out, or some examples of that. So 
this is the core thing here now. Now, what happens is there's, you know, all sorts of layers around this, uh, this, that, and the other. So I was struggling, struggling earlier tonight to try to find what would be a good sample to show, because all my latest samples are um, highly involved, the different multi-neutral, platform-neutral, vendor-neutral platform layers and stuff like this. So this is actually an older version of Blackjack, uh, where, <coughs> and mostly based on, the, this is before it was cross-platform, this is the Alexa version. So fairly early on, let me zoom back to, let's go back to like the server. And for you um, Lambda people will kind of, there's a few things that are different, we'll come back to that um, at the end of the talk. So here's the Blackjack servlet, now again, of course I wrap it as I have it sent another servlet, uh, but <laughs> not very helpful there. So let's go to the base servlet, <coughs> uh, where we handle the post. So the post comes in, we say, okay, that's great. We've got our stuff. Um, looks like I do have Google stuff in here. Um, all right, I'm kind of getting lost in the weeds here. Uh, okay, let's take a different tack. Let's take the speech lid. So I know that will be, um, okay. this is Alexa. So if you've used the Java API in Alexa, you're familiar with the speech lid. So that's their sort of thing to, to handle requests coming in from a user. Um, if you're not, this is kind of the same in most of the other languages. There's the four basic type of requests, the session started and ended, which will tell you about their concept of a start and end to a session, which are almost completely useless because they're not consistent, because they don't always get called, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the launch and the intent, which are the important ones that you get. And what I always do in my pure Alexa skills is I have a minimal, as you can see, a very minimal speechlet that just calls into my standard app logic, which I all put in one place, and both the launch and the um, intent go into the same logic there. So we're going to, I just wanted to give you the, the, the roll up to this point, so that hops to here, give you the other class there, oops, did this weird thing for here, um, and the top of thing here. Now what we do here is, again, this is a very standard template, and if you look at the um, video I did on the subware architecture talks about this a lot more in detail, but that, that's a topic for another talk. But the basic format is like, oh, get all the information I need from the session. That was finger quotes since I'm not broadcasting right now. Uh, do stuff with it, and then send stuff, save the session state, another sort of generic thing here, and then build my response from the, the you know, give the response back to the user. That's the basic structure. So let's dive into get from session. Because here's where we can see the different levels and how I have implemented them here. So essentially, blackjack state, as I, for every thing I have, I have a state object. Okay, this is Java, it's a class. You know, it could be anything else in Python or, or Node.js, whatever you want. But the idea is, this one thing is a collection of all of the information I have pertaining to this user doing stuff. <coughs> um, so, you'll see a couple things here. Uh, going on. And the first thing you see is I have this cache, which I use, and the first thing I do is I try to get the state out of the cache. Now essentially, and you can see I'm indexing the cache by the unique user ID. So this is an in-memory cache, okay? And this is where I do the middle layer of stuff. So I have this state object, um, and I persist it in my cache in memory. And you know, if there's not there, I create a new one, initialize it and put it into the cache so that I will always end up with state in the cache but if I come back a second time and it doesn't matter if the user the, the platform has dropped the session or not I will still get this object and everything in it back now if I restart the server I will lose all the information in there so it's not permanent it's not persistent so it's not that bottom layer this is the middle layer here it's where I can choose to persist what I can see and I can choose myself what is and is not a session. Now, I don't do this here in this particular example. It, it always retains it. Uh, you can do other things. You can have a cache with a timeout on it so that uh, once the object has been in the cache unreferenced for a certain amount of time, it goes away. And that's how you can set your bracket around your due state. Another thing that I do frequently is I keep track of the last time that there was an interaction. Uh, I just write the time into the cache object 
And when it comes back, I can check that, and if it's more than what I consider to be a session, which is usually around five minutes or so, then I expire it, and as if they came to it new and afresh. So you, know, you can do your session maintenance there, but you have the choice. It doesn't matter when the platform drops the line, what the platform thinks, you have control over it. So you can maintain it like that. So that's what happens in these, these lines here. Now, um, the next line here is an awful lot happens. What this actually does here is this goes to the backend store and pulls the backend store information out and attaches it to that. I'm not sure it's going to be very interesting. You can jump into that. And... It's yet another, that's a, that's the backend object cache, which is a different thing. Um, but here it goes, it should go out and talk to, um, <sighs> Dynamics, it, and there's like 50 to 1,000 layers here, so I'm not sure how much you're going to get out of this. But ultimately, the idea is it goes to the Dynamo database engine, fetches the equivalent user object from Dynamo, and writes the information that it has into that state object, uh, populates the state object with the backend information there. So we pick up first, and the, the first set of lines there, we pick up the in-memory information we've, we've persisted in memory. Then here we call off to our I.O. layer, and we pull out the backend information that we've, persisted, that we've put in our persistent user store. And lastly, we actually look in the, in this case, Alexa setting session, and we get any session objects we care about there, and we put them into our state objects there. So there we're um, tracking the last intent, the last parameter to the intent, and uh, our state for the state of the application there. Um, and we do some other cleanup like that there. Uh, and then we're ready, as you can see at the top. That's where we do the get from session. Uh, we get all the data that we need from our three levels of session tracking. We then do stuff. And so let's see here, here. And then with the last, we set the session, which in this case, we write it back in again. Is, you know, largely in parallel. We do some, as I said, they keep track of the number of durations. Uh, here we write to the uh, platform session uh, the values that we pulled out of it so that they're there the next time if the session, if the platform session continues. Uh, here's where we write to our backend store and it takes care of anything it needs to persist. Since the stuff is cached in memory, we get, we have the object that updated on the object. We don't actually have to do anything specific to persist those, but you know, uh, so that is kind of implicit there. So that, again, is, is, is an implementation of those three levels. Where we've got the, the highest level, which is what we put on the platform state, which has a lifetime limited to what the platform considers the session to be. Uh, we have what we cache in memory, uh, and that lifetime is uh, scoped to how long your server remains up, or you can put in your choice to limit it to whatever you want, whatever time period you want. And then at the deepest level, we have what we write to our backend data store. We can write the stuff into there, and we can pull it out from there like that. Um, so I'll make a note here for Lambda users. Lambda um, doesn't actually... Ha the Lambda functions are called, and they're invoked on a per-use basis. So they, they can't really cache stuff in memory. Uh, if you, you can put it there quite happily, but the JVM shuts down each time it's invoked, or Node.js, or whatever like that. Sometimes it keeps it the engine around, sometimes it doesn't keep the engine around. Uh, I've seen Java persist for up to two seconds. <laughs> you know, it, poof, it goes away. Uh, I've heard reports of Node.js lasting longer, I mean, minutes. So um, it really is going to be have to be a... you got to see how it works. But it makes it really hard to do the in-memory cache. and kind of limits you to just putting stuff in a session state, and just putting stuff into the back end. Uh, and again, in Lambda, the back end is problematic because you only have one thread to do stuff on. So you can't cache the back end. You saw that other level that I briefly collapsed over there where I'm caching the back end lookups um, so that you know things are as performant as possible. You don't actually have that option with Lambda. You have to do everything on the user threads. So the user's sitting there drumming their fingers while you have to go and read from the back-end cache and write to the back-end cache. So you might want a slightly different model than this, so you only actually write to the persistent data when you actually really need to, because otherwise there's no point writing it if there's no change, because you're adding an extra delay to the user's response. So Anyhow, uh, so what sort of information do you put in each of these layers? Okay, that, that's kind of a, 
the next important thing and what are each of the layers good for. Now in this particular example here, uh, I keep track of the last intent and the parameter, last parameter, the parameter of the last intent and the state. Uh, the state is the sort of, well, what, what, what are we currently doing? Are we in the case of Blackjack? Are we in a game or are we, quotes, in the foyer? Um, that's, I think, the two main states. Sometimes I have little states that also deal with, I, you've asked a question, you're waiting for them to say yes or no, that would be another state like that. Um, I think Blackjack only has two. If we have any questions with Blackjack. Subor, I think, is four because it has, do you really want to exit and do you really want to give up or return to base or something like that? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, the state of the game, that's, that's kind of really up to you. It makes sense in some places. It doesn't make sense in other cases. In Blackjack, it's like, uh, you get kicked out, but it knows and it can say, do you want to continue the game when it launches again? That's that sort of thing like that. Something like, uh, Six Swords, if you're in the middle of a combat, well, when you come back to the game, you're still in the middle of a combat, because you, know, you really don't want to get out of that. Uh, it's going to be up to you, um... Whether it makes sense that if they sneeze and lose the connection and connect up again, what you need to ask yourself is, are, is your user going to be annoyed if they have to redo whatever they just did? So, for example, if you're filling out a form, you know, uh, an audio form or something like that. For, for example, I did a, uh, a demo skill uh, for tracking UPS packages. And you had to read the number in because the number is like 16 hexadecimal characters. Some ungodly number of uh, alphanumeric characters, it was kind of, you can't just say them all at once, you have to take it, so we take it in batches of three, so it's like, one, two, three, it's like, okay, I heard one, two, three, if that's correct, say the next three, if it's not, say it again, so you say four, five, six, you know, and, at you, know, you drop the line, come back to it, and, um, you have to decide, is your user going to be annoyed if they're going to have to say, you know, the first several digits again, and try to get through it all, and not be interrupted, or do you have to pick up where you left off? Something like a number? for a UPS package, you know, asking them to say it again might not be a bad thing, because it's one chunk you're just spreading up. If you're asking them, you know, for, like, the address, and you're breaking it down, the house number, the street number, the city, the zip code, the country, and stuff like that, they're probably going to be pretty annoyed if they, if they sneeze and start over again, and they have to give you all that information again. So that's kind of the demarcation I like to use with respect to does it make sense to keep it in the live state or does it make sense not to keep it in the not state? You know, something like the last intent they say, that you know, only makes sense to keep it in the platform state because if you lose it and you start it up again, you've just launched something else, you probably won't remember exactly where you were. Um, Six Swords does that. Yeah, I think I showed off the last thing where you can say more and get more information about what you last said. Um, that is used there, but it doesn't make sense that you're going to like be in the middle of something and you're distracted, it drops the thing, you come back to it, and the first thing you're going to do is say more. That Nobody does that. So that's a perfectly safe thing to put into your very most volatile state, the platform state like that. Um, beyond that, uh, you then have what you're going to keep in memory for the lifetime of the server and what you're going to write to the backend store. And that really does depend on your model. I mean, anything that's going to go into the backend store uh, is going to be anything that you want to be guaranteed to get later, like your, your high score, you know, you know, blackjack you sell the high score, the number of games you have won, and stuff like that. Uh, something, for example, like if you need the password or some sort of passcode to enable something, like I know Star Lanes uh, synthesizes a password for you, uh, and it, it just takes two, you know, like blue uh, potato or something like that. It's like a color and a noun. A very simple list of things, but it's just kind of a, um, you know, a sort of like two-factor authorization. You could find it on the website, and then you could say it in the game to unlock some things like that. The fact that you, much like, you know, it's a good example. Treat them like web cookies. If it's something that, okay, you want to maintain, but not necessarily maintain forever, then that's something that's good to go into that middle state, the stuff where you choose the session, like your current preferences, you know, what you've currently set things to, you know, things that you don't necessarily want to remember, remember forever, but that you should remember uh, in case they drop the line, they have to come back to it. If you're with the example of filling out a form, you know where you are halfway through, put that in your memory cache, and that's good because you um, you've got that there. They can come back to it if they're like that. Uh, another technique and a way to use these things is you know I didn't dive into it. And the reason that some of the backend stuff was complicated was because it offloads the saving of stuff to another thread. That's so I can respond as fast as I can to the user and get them their answer without having to wait for things to go on in the back end. Uh, 
And a good technique for that is you're caching it in memory anyways, um, that you can then, when you have the time, get back to saving it to the back end. So it may be that you have a complete overlap between what you store in cache and what you have in the back store, but by storing it in memory in a cache, you have the luxury of having your back end stuff update when it wants to on a thread. Uh, this can be important in DynamoDB. Uh, I think we're done with code. Um, this can be important in DynamoDB because they do throttle you and you have to pick your pain level. Um, in the sense that you know, it's like, oh, you know, I only want five read writes per. I mean, it costs you like 50 cents a month per number of read writes you can do per second. Okay, and you know, for most skills, nobody uses them, so it's not really massively hit upon uh, other skill. I mean, if you've got a really popular skill, you're going to have to start paying for a higher load. I mean, I get warnings occasionally. Um, some of my skills hit the threshold where my, you know, sort of penny-pinching habits have, like, minimized the lookups to my table and stuff like that. But if I got it going on a back thread, you can say, okay, well, you know, let, let me throw, I know how much I'm writing, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to write this, and if I exceed my quota, I'll just wait for a little bit, and then, you know, write it in another second, because, you know, I might get a spurt of users, but I don't I usually. I usually don't. I love. I love to it if I did, but I usually don't get massive a massive tide of users that I could just never catch up with. So the thing is, you could do that. The other advantage is you cache into memory is like if they interact a couple of times before you save it, you only have to save it once. So that's kind of nice. It also actually makes the code a little nicer because your code can say save here, save here, save here, save here, and you know if it's all in the same call, it doesn't matter. You don't have if you don't want to save every time like. Uh, I do in that blackjack game, you could just say, okay, well, I'm going to tell it what I want to say. But if you tell it a couple of times, it's all right, because likely your thread hasn't caught up to it yet. And by the time it catches up to it, it it's only had once, you know, you, you'd collate the save request. And like, oh, okay, I can save this once. Okay. Nice and clean. Um, so, you know, those are some tricks you can use with that sort of station. So, to recap, um, state is something you want to save from interaction to interaction. Uh, the platforms provide you with one level of saving stuff that is scoped to what the platform considers to be a session with the users, which goes from you invoking your agent or skill up to the point where it decides you've stopped, either because you've actually stopped or because it hasn't heard you right or you've lost internet connection or the cat has sat on you and made you scream, which you didn't recognize and dropped the line, or whatever it is. Um, so that's the highest, most volatile level. Okay, that's good for saving things that only make sense within the immediate context of what you've just done, and things that it's not going to be painful for the user to repeat if they need to. Um, you can enhance that by having your own in-memory cache. Hard to do in Lambda, but any other language, it's not hard to do. Um, where you can persist whatever information you want in an in-memory object, index it by the unique user ID, uh, and you can come back to it. And that will has the scope of living for the lifetime of your server. If you reboot your server, you'll lose all that information. Uh, but very few of us reboot our servers very often, so that's good for a while. And so if the user drops the line because of a cat calamity or something, like that hasn't actually bothered me tonight. Um, cat calamity, child calamity, you know, something you attack of pay fever or something, the user doesn't lose that information. And a good thing to put into there is stuff that might be session dependent, but is would be annoying for your user to have to repeat if they had to. You know, like if you're filling out a form, giving a passcode, something like that. It's sort of like a cookie in a browser. And the very bottom level then is what you want to write back to the persistence. So this information you want to keep forever and ever, amen, whatever, that you want to keep on your store. Now, my recommendation, as I sort of did a little sample code there, is that in your code, you keep it as keep it as one data object, and all there, and they're like that. And then you, when you persist or restore your session, is where you decide which bits of that one data object go into which level. So that's very handy because then you can change your mind later and say, you know, actually, I really should make that persist. Let's put it into there like that, or you know, whatever else makes sense along those lines like that. So I hope that has been interesting and informative. Um, I don't see any questions in chat, which is great. Um, Either nobody's listening or <laughs> it makes perfect sense. I don't know which. That's up to you. Uh, you can post questions there. Uh, other ideas, post them in the Slack group. I'm usually hanging out in one of the two or I catch up on old notices, whatever like that. Um, check out the video I did of the subwar architecture. It goes into some of the architecture I talked about here in a lot more detail. If you want more detail on any of that, 
you know, post in comments, send me a message, something like that. Uh, give me something to talk about next week. Uh, unless I think of something else, I might talk about certification, which will probably end up with me ranting about certification for half an hour or more, because I've been ranting for a very long time. But I'm not sure that that would be as educational. It might, you know, help my blood pressure, but you know, my blood pressure is usually pretty good, so I don't need to worry necessarily about that. I should work more on things that are. So. But anyhow, good night.